He's got the whole wide world in his hands. He's got the big round world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. Chill, don't worry, I'm not going to continue. <laughs> I had to, had to find that in a different hymn book than what we're normally used to. We use the uh, Nash, New National Baptist hymn, hymnal and whatnot. Yeah. Get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please read along with me in the scriptures we will be looking at today. Please read along with me, word for word, verse by verse, at the scriptures we will be looking at. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Got a question about the context, about anything? Pause the video and search it on your own, okay? Read along with me, because this goes quicker than this sometimes, okay? Let's begin really quickly in Psalm 93, okay? This is going to be some meat, but it's going to be washed down with some milk. Okay? Psalm 93. The Lord reigneth. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength. Wherewith he hath girded himself. The world also is established. That it cannot be moved. Thy throne is, exalt, is established of old. Thou art from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters. Yea, than the mighty waves of the sea. Thy testimonies are very sure. Holiness becometh thine house, O Lord, forever. I like about verse 4. Now, this could, obviously, I believe, making reference onto the flood, obviously. But also remember Revelation chapter 15. Uh, 17 verse 15 and also remember often times we will see natural elements such as mountains and waters being in context like likened onto types of people okay I remember that okay today dear friends dear saints I we are going to be Lightly gleaning through Genesis chapter 1. The beginning. We're going to glean through the entire chapter of Genesis. We are going to have some slight, slight expository on Genesis chapter 1. Um, and also to remember as we are going through this, when it comes to this, that God as Father, as Creator, as owner of all this, we could be here for four-part video at two to three hours apiece going through Scripture upon Scripture upon Scripture. We can, we can do that. We can do that. But see, you got to remember... Um, with some of these, especially these atheists, um, they will ask you questions whose answers they don't want to know. Okay? And they will ask questions to try to trip you up. And they will come back with more questions and with more questions and with more questions. It's like the one atheist guy who sent me all these questions about biology and physics and stuff like that. And I'm like, dude! I can't answer those. I don't know that stuff. And then he shoots back. Well, see, you can't prove that God created these things. And I responded, you're right. Onto you, no proof or no evidence can be given you 
that would sweat, persuade you that God is. You're right. Nothing that I or any other brother or sister of the church of God could give you would change your mind in any way, shape, or fashion. Why? Because they have already made their choice. Okay? That is why. And when you go and see a lot of these apologetics. Well, who? <laughs> only the devil. Only a Jesuit could come up with such a stupid, idiotic term as apologetics. Like that, that devil uh, Jesuit coadjutor, David Wood. Or that other Jesuit coadjutor, uh, Winger or Wagner. Which several of you saints is like, hey, Brad, can you do... No, 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 you leave, the, leave them guys alone. That golfing idiot. Okay, you, you, these people... They're, they're touched in their lacabeza. They're crazy, man. There, there ain't nothing with these types, those types of people, with the yea hath God said, okay, who question the scriptures. There's nothing we could do with those people. You can just leave them alone, okay? But again, in 1 Peter chapter 3, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Now pay attention. Pay attention. Are you reading with me? Pay attention. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope. Who is our hope? The Lord Jesus Christ. He is our hope. Okay? Be, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. This does not in any way, shape, or form say that we have to answer every single solitary question. Because a lot of these people, especially the atheists, will ask you questions to cause strife. And then the guys, the, you know, physics and biology... It's like, dude, I can't. I don't know the answer. I can't. And then they, well, you can't prove that God created these things. And like I said, it's like, you're right. On to you. No answer would suffice you because you've already made your choice. You've already made your choice. A lot of these people who are like that, if the Lord himself were to be like, hey, hey. It's like, you know, like, like with the Jews at the crucifixion. They said unto the Lord, let him come down from the cross and we'll believe him. Belogness. Belogness. Baloney sandwiches. If he would have come down. Oh, you mean if I come down from this, you'll believe me? Okay. Here I am. Satan. They would have done. They would have been Satan, Lucifer, devil, and they would have tried to kill him anyway. Okay. Alright? <laughs> there are some people, brethren, people who just don't want to hear. And no matter what kind of hoop you can go through to try to answer their questions, they'll keep coming back with more, with more, with more. Now, there is a difference between someone who wants to know than someone who wants to cause strife by questions. Okay? And that doesn't take that much discernment to figure it out. Because someone who wants to know when you answer the questions, they work along with you. And, and when you get the chance in person, mano y mano, to see that, and you see the lights click on, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. It's beautiful. Praise the Lord. Okay? But you got to remember, a lot of people, especially nowadays, man, they don't want to hear it. And like I said, with a lot of these dudes and dudesses, um, if the Lord himself were to appear to some of these people, and he doesn't do that, despite what some of these wicked, crazy, charismatics they want to believe, um, if the Lord were to appear to some of these people personally, just like what they did on the cross, let him come down, I will believe him. He's like, okay, here I am, he comes down, oh, the devil, ah, they wouldn't believe him anyway. Okay. This video is a response onto a comment that I received. Now, 
To the individual who left a comment, I am not attacking you. Even though you did mean your comment as a dig against me. That's okay. Take a number. Okay? Take a number. That's fine. Uh, the comment was, Rome, the Jesuit order, are in control of the world right now. They are. Rome is slowly reestablishing its control over all the world. And the comment was like, the Lord is in control. Well, yeah, hello, yes, you're right. Isn't that obvious? But see, that's the thing. This day and age that we live in, for some people it isn't obvious. Okay? All right? Like I said, the individual kind of meant the comment as a little dig at me. And that's fine. I don't care. And, dude... I'm not attacking you. I'm not going to name you. I'm not even going to admit. I, I did make reference to the comment, but I'm not. I'm not attacking you. I'm not. Okay. I'm not. Thank you. Thank you. Because we have this video now that we're going to address this. Okay. Uh, the Lord created the world, the earth, and everything therein. He's the boss. He owns it. Okay. But. The Jesuit order is in control right now. And once the body of Christ get redeemed, he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way, then openly Roman Catholicism is going to be ruling the world openly. Okay? All right? But the Jesuits are in control right now. And see, and even atheists will say, well, that's a contradiction. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Okay? Dear friend, you you did make a dig at me with your comment. That's fine. That, thank you. Thank you. Because we have this that we're going to go through today. Now, okay, this is, like I said, this is going to be milk, uh, meat washed down with milk, okay? There are a multitude of verses that we, I mean so many, that we could go to. But we're not going to. We're going to try to keep this as simple as possible. Okay? But with this video, we are going to show God is creator. That this whole thing, everything is his. Okay? But see, now, the atheists and some of these uh, Christians will say, well, how come you say that you're, you're, you're fear-mongering, you're this and that? You're God. No, dude. No, no, no. And there, therein lies the dig. Uh, to an individual who has openly, uh, you know, disagreed. And hey, that's fine. You know, you don't have to. <laughs> Come on, dude. You don't have to agree with me. Uh, okay. All right, that's fine. Come on. <laughs> Come on, you don't have to agree with me. What saith the scripture? Okay. So, let's get ready. If you have one of these, uh, these, uh, 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 ribbon markers today you want to use it now we are going to have light expository light expository okay stay with me till the end because if you because right now is the attention span of most of you you click off and go away without hearing it you, you know you know what why don't you go pound a little sand and take a long walk off of a short pier ain't nobody got time for that okay stay with me Genesis chapter 1. Genesis means beginning. Verses 1 on to verse 5. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the capital S Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Oh, and remember, there's millions and billions and trillions of years between verses 1 and 2. <laughs> how, can any, how can any imbecile believe that? That there's a gap between 1 and 2 that allots for millions and trillions and billions of years in galaxy far, far away when puppies were the eldest animal. I mean, how stupid is that? Okay? Verse 3. 
And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness, division, separation, okay? Distinction. Oh boy. Ouch. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the, the, the definitive article, the first day. Now, how could there be millions and trillions and billions and zillions, quadrillions of years between verses 1 and 2 and it still be the first day? The gap theory thing is so stupid. It really is. It really is. Hey, if you're one of these Christians, remember Catholics are Christians, and you want to believe that, I want you up the Prozac a little, buddy. But hey, whatever, whatever you want to do, okay? But now, some interesting things. We see in the first three verses of Scripture, the Godhead, the Godhead in action. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, okay? God is one person, not three persons, that make that that's insanity that's insanity okay that's crazy one God okay and we'll address this here as we continue but in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit capital S of God moved upon the face of the waters okay and God said, God said, spoke, okay? God said, let there be light. And there was light. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Verses 1 on to verse 5. John chapter 1. Verses 1 on to verse 5. In the beginning was the capital W word. And the capital W word was with God. And the capital W word was God. Now that's not a past tense was. That's affirming that Jesus is God the Father. <laughs> yeah. And some of you might be like, Wait, 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 wait. Okay, in the beginning, we just read the first five verses in Genesis. Where was he? Uh, okay. Uh, go back to Genesis chapter 1. Okay. Look at verse 3. And God said, he spoke. He spoke. Okay. Why did he speak? He spoke words. Okay. Seriously. Okay. Okay. Okay, he spoke. Let there be light. He spoke. What did he speak? He spoke words. Okay? He spoke words. So God's speaking, in the beginning was the word God said. Okay? Let there be light. Let there be light. Let there be light. When you look in 1 John chapter 4, uh, 1 John, excuse me, chapter 1 here, you will see four occurrences of the capital L light. Okay? All right, there are, um, uh, I think there are, is another appearance of a capital L light within the scripture, but the difference is that's the beginning of a verse. Okay? Totally different thing, okay? But here in, in John, someone pointed that out to me. I can't remember who or where, but here in this context, you see it from verses six of, from verses seven on to verse nine, you see four appearances 
of the capital L light. Okay? Let there be light. God said. Okay? Do you get it? Okay. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. By who? Jesus Christ. <clears throat> the flesh made the Word. Huh? That some of these idiots think that way. The Word made flesh. Okay? God is not flesh, you idiots. I mean that for a select few. We've already discussed that and proven that. Hey, you want to bring that up again? I'll just put it again in the community section debunking your ridiculous arguments. Okay? <clears throat> okay? Anyway, let's continue. Same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life. And the light was the life and the life, excuse me, was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Okay? Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, verses 14 on to verse 20. Okay? Colossians chapter 1, verses 14 on to verse 20. Talking about our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God our Father. Okay? This this is nuts and bolts. Okay? You know, we've we've addressed that the Lord is in control and that the Lord, the earth is the Lord's, but apparently we need to go over it and hey, like I said, dude, you thank you. Seriously. Thank you. Thank you. Let's continue. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created, that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. All things were created by him and for him. The Bible messed this up royally. Just like they mess up the creation account. One day. Huh? One day. Who knows? Two days. Second day. Okay? They, they remove the definitive article. Okay? Anyway. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body. The church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all full fullness dwell. The Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost, these three are one, okay, one person, okay, crazy Satanist. Okay? And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Go back to John chapter 1. Go back to John chapter 1. Let's read now verses 10 on to verse 14. Okay? John 1, 10 on to verse 15. He was in the foil, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not, professing themselves to be wise, became fools. Fool says in his heart there is no God. He came unto his own, the Jews, the Hebrew people, and his own received him not. Is it not evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah? But, okay? But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, 
which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, just believe and receive. <sighs> Sleazy believism. <laughs> Gotta hate it. Yes. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the flesh was made the word. <laughs> you idiots. <laughs> and the word was made flesh. And dwelt among us. We beheld his glory. The glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Let's go back now to Genesis chapter 1. So in Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 and verse 5, the first day light was created. Okay? And Mr. Richling and his two main um, disciples, the zombie and Elmer Fudd, you know, who are carrying on his type of sleazy believism, okay? Not everything that he preached, because Mr. Richling was an obvious heretic. He was a Jesuit. But his type of sleazy believism, uh, the zombie and Elmer are continuing on that legacy, okay? But we see here that light was created. I brought up Mr. Richling because he says that Jesus was a created being. <laughs> and there are people out there who call that guy brother. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And the joy and the glory, I'm out, buddy. So, let's pick up now at verses 6 on to verse 8. And God said, speaking again, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the, the second day. I'm writing down a video about the third heaven where we talk about that. We have a video where we address that. Okay? Now, go to Psalm 29. Like I said, brethren, my dear brother, my dear young brother, um, any verses you want to add to any of this, go ahead. Go ahead, please. Please, okay? Psalm 29, verses 1 on verse 3. Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice. Oh, I wonder who that's a reference on to. Uh -huh. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. Let's, let's read verse 4. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. Okay? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay? Psalm 104. You're going to see that we're going to reference uh, several psalms in different places. You're going to notice this. Psalm 104, verses 1 on to verse 6. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Lord my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. Who coverest thyself with light as with a garment. You've got to love the tie-ins there. Check your reference too. There might even be a reference for uh, uh, what you call what we're looking at, okay? Who coverest thyself with light as with a garment. Who stretchest out the heavens, plural, like a curtain. Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters. Who maketh the clouds his chariots, his chariot. Who walketh upon the wings of the wind. Who maketh his angels spirits, his ministers a flaming fire. Who laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be 
removed forever. Thou coverest, coveredest it with the deep as with a garment. The water stood above the mountains. Okay? Back to Genesis chapter 1. Like I said, there are a plethora of verses that we could use. This, we're keeping this simple. We're keeping this simple. Okay? Like I said, you want to add to it? Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay? Let's continue. Now verses 9 on to verse 13 in Genesis chapter 1. And God said, there's, there's speaking again, okay? Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. What were we reading to on verse 13? And God called the dry land earth. Mm -hmm. And the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. Mm -hmm. God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind. Distinction. Okay? Distinction after his kind. Okay? Whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. See, God is a God of distinction. And you see that in the first five verses of scripture dividing the day from the night division separation distinction okay what does satan do he wants to jumble everything together and call it a mess like so many christians do with the scripture or even a bible let's continue and the earth brought forth grass an herb yielding seed after his kind. And the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. The definitive article. Third day. Okay? Okay. Let's go back to Psalm 104. Psalm 104. Thank you, dear, dear man, by the way. Uh, thank you. Seriously. Uh, seriously. Uh, I was not irritated at all. I was a little kind of at first like, <laughs> okay, buddy. But the Lord has used it. So, thank you. Seriously. And if you get offended by this, Take offense, take a gate, and don't let it hit you in the buttocks on the way out. But if not, thank you. Psalm 104 again, verses 10 on to verse 17. He sendeth the springs into the valleys, which run among the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild asses quench their thirst. By them shall the fowls of the heaven have their habitation, which sing among the branches. He... Okay, note the he's here. Okay, from verse 10 on to verse 17, note the he's, okay? He watereth the hills from his chambers. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of thy works. He causeth the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of man, that he may bring forth food out of the earth and wine that maketh glad the heart of man and oil to make his face to shine, and bread which strengtheneth man's heart. The trees of the Lord are full of sap. The cedars of Lebanon, which he hath planted, where the birds make their nests. As for the stork, the fir trees are her house. Okay? He, 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 he. Okay? Let's continue in Genesis, verses 14 on to verse 19 now. And God said, there, there he's speaking again, okay? The word made flesh, okay? Yeah. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons 
and for days and years. <laughs> Some atheists are like, well, man came up with the days and the years. Let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. What are we reading to? Uh, verse 19. Okay. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. God makes the stars. Okay. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide there we see division again separation distinction okay there we see it again and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness and God saw that it was good and the evening and the morning were the fourth day Psalm 147, excuse me, excuse me, let's go in order. Psalm 8, Psalm 8, not Job, Psalm 8. We're going to hit Psalm 8 again, but later, okay? Psalm 8, verses 3 on to verse 4. When I consider thy heaven, where God is, the firmament, and the sky, the three heavens. There is a video somewhere on the channel, which will be in the description box, okay? When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars, which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? We're going to address this here a little bit later. Okay, all right. Now let's go to Psalm 147, just one verse in Psalm 147. Psalm 147, verse 4, one verse. He telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their names. Let's, verse 5. Great is our Lord, and of great power. His understanding is infinite. He telleth the number of the stars. Man can't know the number of the stars. Okay, that's even said in Scripture. We, we're not covering that because, like I said, you've you got to do a little of this on your own. God knows exactly how many stars are up there. Man can only guess. God knows the number of every single one of your hairs that's in your head. Even those of you guys who are legitimately bald on top. He knows the number of the hairs on your head. He knows the stars. And what does that say? He calleth them all by their names. So the trillions of stars, which God knows the numbers of, he knows them all by name. <laughs> and y'all evolutionists think, that this evolved for millions and billions and trillions of years in a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> okay. Jeremiah chapter 31. Like I said, brethren, you might be thinking, well, Brad, what about this? Put those in the description box or in, in the comment section. Go ahead. Okay? Go ahead, please. All right? That thing's got to do today, too. Okay? So... Jeremiah 31, verses 35 on to verse 37. Okay? Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for light by night, which divideth the sea when the waves thereof roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from before me, saith the Lord, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. Okay? Here's a little bit of an answer to the charge laid against me very subtly. Okay? Thus said the Lord, If heaven above can be measured, and it can't be, Okay? And the foundations of the earth searched out beneath, 
I will also cast off all the seed of Israel. For all that they have done, saith the Lord. Okay? Verse 37 telling you that the heavens can't be measured and the earth cannot be searched out beneath. Why? Because the core of the earth is like really, 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 really hot. Okay? Like hot as hell. Okay? <laughs> All right? God made everything. This is all his. Okay? All right? Now, let's go back to Genesis chapter 1 and read verses 20 on to verse 23 now. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales, and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind. And every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Okay. There is no fossil that shows like a bird turning into a chimpanzee. Okay. They have all these fake you know, Neanderthals or things like that. that That's just all nonsense. Guys with like arthritis or whatever. There's no scientific proof of it. Okay? There isn't. Okay? Verse 22. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the sea and let, the, and let fowls multiply in the earth. Okay? And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. The fifth day. Now, for this one, we only have one reference. Uh, like I said, there, <laughs> we could do so many, but that's not the point. Psalm 50, verses 10 on to verse 12. For every beast of the forest is mine. And the cattle upon a thousand hills, I know all the fowls of the mountains, and the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I love this, I would not tell thee, for the world is mine, and the fullness thereof. He's got the whole wide world in his hand. Okay? All right. Go back to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, verses 24 on to verse 28. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle, and creeping thing, beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And atheists like to go to Genesis chapter 2. It's like, well, the order is out of whack. Okay? Uh, what is it? Up to uh, verse what? Uh, what was it? Up to verse 7, okay? It's a recap of chapter 1, but it's also in chapter 2, he's describing what is going on in the Garden of Eden, Eden specifically. Okay, it's not a contradiction. Okay, it's what he did in the Garden of Eden to bring them before Adam. Okay, there's no contradiction. All right? All right, now let's continue. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the, over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Remember this. That man will be given dominion over what the Lord hath created. Keep that in mind. This is the Lord's. Okay? 
But we're going to address that a little. Hinge this in your mind. And if God is three, three persons that make one God, one of me, ask my wife, ask my, my beloved brethren, one of me is enough. Can you imagine three of me that make one? You know, got to give credit to where it's due. His Holiness, he did that one video where, you know, we're all three. I am Brian this, I am Brian that, and I am Brian that. Uh, we are all Brian's, but we're one Brian. I mean, brilliant, brilliant video that the guy did. You got it. It's like, that's great. That that one was, that was great. You got to give credit where it's due. You really do. That was like, bravo, dude. That My hat's off. That one's great. But yeah, okay, all right. What is he talking about? Hey, you. It doesn't matter who you is. You're made in the image of God. You have a spirit. Even you devils, you wicked filth, sleazy believism, fake gracers, you uh, Jesuit coadjutors, you have a soul. You have a body. You have a spirit. You have a soul. You have a body. God has a spirit, soul, and body. One God. Who is one person. Okay? You get it? This, this ain't rocket science. Okay? Let's continue. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Um, there will be links in the scripture, box, of course. Male and female. Listen. You woke tards out there. Okay, I know woke started as one thing. But woke has evolved into a nonsensical doctrine that is plaguing America at the behest of the Jesuits to tear America apart. Okay? Anyway, there are two genders, male and female. Okay? There are only two genders. That's it. You don't want to accept that. You're showing contempt to God. That's your problem. But there are only two genders. Okay? What about homorphodites? Uh, that's a unique, rare thing. Okay? All right? There is such a thing as a homorphodite. What's that? Uh, an individual born that has both. That, that's a legitimate thing. Okay? All right? That, that's rare. But nonetheless... Male and female. There's only two genders. Okay? There's only two genders. Male or female. Well, what would you call the homorphodite? A mutant? <laughs> okay? Okay? All right? They have a spirit, soul, and body. They're a person. Okay? But that's a mutation. Okay? If anything... Let's continue. All right. Where we read on to verse 28. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth and subdue it, and have dominion mankind, have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Hinge these verses about man being given the dominion. Remember that. Remember that, okay? Because that's coming up here pretty quickly, okay? Now, Isaiah 45, Isaiah 45, verses 18 and 19. Isaiah 45, verses 18 and 19. For thus saith the Lord that created the heaven. God himself that formed the earth and made it. He hath established it. 
He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is none else. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I said not unto the seed of Jacob, Seek ye me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. Which is why you atheists don't want to believe in God. I, I was made aware of this imbecilic um, individual um, who calls himself an atheistic Satanist. An atheistic Satanist. And the guy even says, like, hail Satan and blah, 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 blah. But yet, he's an atheist. He doesn't believe in Satan. <laughs> People like that, you, there's no, I mean, they have to be on a sinking submarine for something to happen. Okay, a miracle has to take place for an idiot like that. Who, atheistic Satanist. Are you? And you say, hail Satan? Okay, you are of your father the devil. Okay, but they'll, they'll find out sooner or later. Okay, let's go back to Psalm 8. Let's go back to Psalm 8 again, like I said. Now, picking up verses 5 and 9. Hinge about how unto man God gave the dominion. Remember that. Psalm 8, verses 5 on to 9. Reference unto our Lord Jesus Christ right here. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion of the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. Talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. God as a man who will, who will be ruling and reigning from Jerusalem for a thousand years during the kingdom of heaven. Which, hey, you sleazy believism, devils, it's all works during the kingdom of heaven. You don't. Hey, define what faith is according to scripture. And then try to tell me how it's by grace through faith during the kingdom of heaven, you idiot. Ugh. Anyway, anyway, enough of that. Okay? All sheep and oxen, yea, the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. And there's only one name given among men under heaven, whereby we must be saved. Yahashawashi. <laughs> Yahashua. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, God bless you. <laughs> okay, you got some snot in your nose, huh? It's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Okay. Now, let's go to back to Genesis and finish this up. Uh, they're looking in Genesis chapter 1. Verses 29 on to verse 31. God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the, fee in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for me. you got to remember, this is before the flood, and before the flood, every obviously, guys were growing to be, what, 10, 12 feet tall or something like that? Okay, living for almost a thousand years. Okay, all right, the atmosphere, the world was different before the flood, okay? And the flood created everything that we see, rapido, okay? Like the Grand Canyon was, I believe, created in a matter probably of minutes, if not hours, okay? It wasn't over millions and billions, that's nonsense, okay? Before the flood, things were very, very different, okay? And yes, yes, man was originally created. You can argue right here. Yes, you can. Man was originally created. Go ahead and argue it. Vegan. Well, 
we don't know if they were eating butter or honey, which is animal byproduct. But right there, you can get, it's like, yeah, man was originally created not eating meat. Let's say that. Yes, you're right. In, a, in an era, in a dispensation, okay, in a time, okay, before the flood, whatever you want to call it, where oxygen was more richer, the earth was different. I mean, under that type of, in that type of world where the oxygen was more pure, okay, um, yeah, you could get all your nutrients from trees and fruits and veggies and herbs, okay? But after the fall, after the fall, and especially after the flood, when everything changed, okay? All right? So yes, before the flood, things were different. And yes, before the fall, before the flood, yes! Yes. After the fall, though, you know, after the fall, things changed, definitely. But especially after the flood, the whole world changed. Okay? But yes, you can make the argument that man was originally created vegan or at least vegetarian. Okay? That's what it was before the fall, before the flood. You gotta remember that. When you got people today, hey look, if you wanna be a vegetarian, if you wanna be a vegan, hey, knock yourself out, buddy, go right ahead. I was a vegan for what, two, three years? Four, five years, something like that? Yeah, I was. Go ahead, knock yourself out, man, go right ahead. It's not a requirement for salvation or anything like that, okay? And we are specifically told for us today to not judge people according to what they eat. If you want to be a vegetarian, vegan, hey, knock yourself out. If I want to eat Bambi, okay? If I want to have a big old fat greasy cheeseburger, okay? If I want to have it wrapped in bacon, okay? I can do that, okay? You don't judge me for what I eat. That's pretty specific in Scripture. But anyway, verse 30. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat. And it was so. Even the animals didn't eat each other, but they were eating the plants. Okay? And God saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Six days. God created the heaven and the earth. And then you read chapter 2. On the seventh day, day of completion, the day of rest, he rested. Obviously. So six days, literal creation. God made everything. Okay? But Psalm 24. Psalm 24, verses 1 and 2. Psalm 24, verses 1 and 2. The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof. That's going to be the title of this video. The earth is the Lord's, okay? The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof. The whale, and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Psalm 89. Psalm 89, verses 6. On to verse 18. Psalm 89, verses 6. On to verse 18. For who in the heaven can be compared unto the Lord? Who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto the Lord? God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints, and to be had in reverence of all of them that are about him. Do you see that today? Especially with a lot of these atheists. Especially with a lot of these Christians. O Lord God of hosts, who is a strong Lord like unto thee, or to thy faithfulness round about thee? Thou rulest 
the raging of the sea. When the waves thereof arise, thou stillest them. Thou hast broken Rahab in pieces, as one that is slain. Thou hast scattered thine enemies with thy strong arm. The heavens are thine. The earth also is thine. As for the world and the fullness thereof, thou hast founded them. But who does this all belong to? This is obvious. Okay? This ought to be obvious. Okay? But hey, apparently it isn't for some people. Praise the Lord, that's why we're doing this today. You can use this as uh, whatever, okay? Uh, where did we leave off? Verse 12. The north and the south thou hast created them. Tabor and Hermon shall rejoice in thy name. Thou hast a mighty arm. Strong is thy hand, and high is thy right hand. Right hand synonymous with the Lord Jesus Christ. That don't mean that left-handed people is cursed. Okay? That No. No. That's just synonymous with the Lord being on the right hand of God. Okay? That kind of thing. All right? Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. Now what are we reading to on the verse 18, right? Yes. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. In thy name shall they rejoice all the day. Alleluia. And in thy righteousness shall they be exalted. Amen. Alleluia. Whose name? Whose righteousness? Amen. Amen. Alleluia. For thou art the glory of their strength. And in thy favor, grace, our horn shall be exalted. For the Lord is our defense, and the Holy One of Israel is our King. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All this is the Lord's. The whole world belongs unto Him. Amen. Hey, dear friend. And I have never once taught contrary to you. Never once. All right, but I'm not going at you. Not going at you. Live and let live. Okay, I'm not going at you. Okay, I'm not. But I've never taught contrary. Never once. But let's now go to Psalm 115. And bef but before we go to Psalm 115, go to Deuteronomy chapter 32, okay? you got to remember that in the book of 1 Kings chapter 22, the Lord was about Ahab or Ahab, about who will go and deceive Ahab. And the Spirit came up and said, I'll deceive him. And the Lord's like, how are you going to do it? He said, I'll do it this way. And the Lord's like, go ahead, and you will succeed, okay? All right? The Lord himself didn't deceive Ahab, but he allowed someone, a spirit, to go and deceive Ahab. Okay? There ain't nothing that happens without the Lord's knowledge. Ain't going to pull the wool over anybody's eyes. I have never, even my enemies will attest to this, I have never once taught contrary to that. Not once, dear friend. Not once. Okay? But in Deuteronomy chapter 32, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 35, on to verse 39, To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. For the Lord shall judge his people, and repent himself for his servants, when he seeth their power is gone. And there is none shut up or left. And he shall say, where are their gods? Little G. Okay? Their rock. 
in whom they trusted. Hmm. See, this, this also plays into the thing of free will. Major, major plays into the thing of free will. Okay? God's like, you know, I gave you guys a perfect planet. And I knew you were going to do it. But look at what you've done to it. <laughs> well, you've made it. Now I've got to clean up your mess. Okay? Anyway. And he shall say, where are their gods? Their rock in whom they trusted which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings. Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. See now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill. And I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Let's read verse 40. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. Psalm 115. Psalm 115, verses 16 on to verse 18. Psalm 115, verses 16 on to verse 18. The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's. Don't look at me. Look at the verse. But the earth hath he given to the children of men. Hmm. He formed it to be inhabited, didn't he? Remember when I told you to hinge in your head in Genesis chapter 2? Okay. Uh, verses 26 on to verse 28 again. And God said, Let us make man in our image, spiritual and body. And at this time, sinlessly perfect, yes, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, dominion, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and, and over all the earth, okay, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he them. Male and female and other kin and whatever. No, male and female. And male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Okay? And subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. People will point out replenish. you got to remember, uh, replenish look this up, just simply means to fill. Um, God said that he would preserve his word. And he preserved his word perfectly in the seventh and final purification of his word, English. But the English language itself is not preserved. Because you look in the Webster's 1828 to a dictionary of today and see how language has changed. Oy vey. Replenish there, in right there, means simply to fill. And people will go to replenish, so there must have been a war between verses 1 and 2 in Genesis chapter 1, where Satan, no! No! Death came into the world because of man. Okay? And if there was a war uh, between verse, uh, like a, uh, an angelic war, where lots of people died between verses 1 and 2 in Genesis chapter 1, uh, that would be contrary to Scripture. Your, your gap theory is stupid. Okay? Why don't you just put the little dog collar on your neck and say, you know, Zichel, okay? Put the little dog collar on your neck, ad majorium to glorium, you Jesuit coadjutor. Go away. Okay? But he gave man. Man, go back to Psalm 15. Don't look at me. Look at the scripture. Psalm 115. Verses 16 on to verse 18. The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's. But the earth hath he given unto the children of men. Now, this does not mean, dear friend, that God has bequeathed ownership of the earth onto 
Man, that does not mean that God, well, I can't do anything because I've got, no. Did you not just read? Did you not just read what we looked at at Genesis chapter 1? Okay? Man is supposed to be the dominant on earth. Mankind. Why ain't the bears ruling? Hmm? Because it was given unto man. Okay? Unto man. And man has been given free will. Because God doesn't want a robot. God's not holding a loaded gun at your head making you do anything. Neither is Satan. Okay? And man in his entirety has rejected God. Atheist. Sleazy believism. Catholic. Calvinist. Charismatic. Moron. Jeho. Sons of Ishmael. Okay? The dead praise not the Lord, neither any that go down into silence. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore praise the Lord. The dead praise not the Lord. Neither. Note that neither. Any that go down into silence. Any that go down into silence. They're dead. Okay? They're dead. Dead. Okay? Dead. Don't speak. You know, you people who go to the mediums or tarot people, you're listening to devils. You're not the dead people. You're not hearing from your Aunt Tilly. If you go to a psychic, you're hearing from a devil. Okay? You're not hearing from the dead. You're hearing from devils. Okay? We've talked about that, about ghosts. Okay? All right? Ghosts. All right, I'm writing that down for things in the description. But the dead praise not the Lord. See, there's a distinction in dead here. The dead praise not the Lord, neither any that go down into silence. Shall the dead praise thee? Like it says in our chapter in Ecclesiastes. Someone help me out in the comment section there. Okay? But, Ephesians chapter 2. See, in that verse, verse 17, there's a distinction in the dead. The dead praise not the Lord, neither... Any that go down into silence, those who are dead. But, see, there are two, two types of dead are being described there. What are they? The one is obvious, the ones who are rotten in the ground, right? Waiting for the uh, saints, you know, waiting for the redemption, okay? But, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 4. And you saved people who come to the Lord on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, call upon his name. Those aren't works. You sleazy believism heretic. Okay? No, they are not. Okay? And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. If you are not saved, born again, converted, sealed until the day of redemption, you're dead in trespasses and sins. You might be upright and bipedal, light in your eyes. But see, if you're not saved, you're dead in what? Trespasses and sins. The dead praise not the Lord. Comma, neither any that go down into silence. See, any that go down into silence, those are in the ground, dead, grave. The dead praise not the Lord, those who are not saved. Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Now what is that spirit? That spirit of Antichrist. To be against and to replace. What is evolution? It's against Christ and seeks to replace him with millions and billions and trillions of years ago. Nonsense. 
he shall be his gods. Knowing good and evil. There are, there are so many verses that could have been added to this. I'm trying to keep this meaty to be washed down with milk. Okay? Let's continue. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature natural. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, because they are foolishness unto them. Okay? That, that's that's uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Uh, no, excuse me, that's uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Okay, I'm running out of fingers here. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them. Why? Because they are spiritually discerned. They're not saved. Okay? Go back to Ephesians. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved us, past tense, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together by Christ, by grace, unmerited favor, are ye saved. And we'll stop right there. You go ahead and read on your own. Okay? So Ephesians chapter 2 begins out addressing us saved people who are sealed unto the day of redemption. That we were once, what? Dead in our trespasses and sins. Like atheists are. Like Muslims are. Like Jehovah's, Morons. Catholics. Okay? Fake gracers. Calvinists. Okay? Alright? The dead praise not the Lord, neither any that go down into silence. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 1. Oh, of course, you, you can't get away from a, a topic or subject like this without going to Romans 1. Okay? Romans chapter 1, verses 20 on to verse 25. Come on. For the invisible things from him, for the invisible things of him, from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. What does that mean? We're made in the image of God. We have a spirit. We have a soul. We have a body. That did not evolve over... How did the spirit evolve? How does the spirit evolve? How does the soul... And atheists will argue, well, there is no such thing as a soul. That's a metaphor. Okay. 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 <laughs> All right, yeah. Go ahead. Up to Prozac there, Mike. Go ahead. Okay. Because that when they knew God, just up here, an intellectualism, no brokenness, no contrition, no fear, but just ho de ho de ho I believe. Hey! I think in my heart, therefore I am. <clears throat> because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish says in his heart there is no God. Foolish is behaving as if you say that. Say in your heart there is no God. And their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise. They became fools. <laughs> and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God. Into an image made like to. What's first listed? Corruptible man. What was Satan's argument? Ye shall be as God's. Knowing good and evil, I will be like the Most High. Satan has been cursed to crawl around on the ground, right? To eat dust. You and I are dust. Okay? Satan savors not the things that be of God, but the things that be of man. Okay? 
Man is the first thing mentioned. And to birds, you know, the stupid little trinity bird that poops on you. And four-footed beasts and creeping things. And see, when you're wise in your own mind and you become a fool, wherefore God also gave them up. Go ahead. You want to believe that you evolved from a sniveling piece of snot out of a water and that you came from a rock eventually and millions and billions and trillions and whatever. You want to believe that? You, you, <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You want to believe you saved yourself without any brokenness, contrition, or fear of the Lord? Go right ahead. Go right ahead. You want to believe you're elect and non-elect? Go ahead. You want to believe that you have to eat Christ to receive him? Go ahead. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. He gives you over. Because you have free will. And unto the earth. God did not bequeath ownership. No. But he has given it unto man. We've already proven that. Okay. Okay. Why do you think at the kingdom of heaven, God, as man, Jesus Christ, God the Father, is going to rule for a thousand years and turn everything into farming, make the earth what it ought to be, okay? This earth is going to go away. We're going to get a second earth. And remember, this is the first earth. Because remember, remember the gap there, guys, said that between 1 and 2 in Genesis chapter 1, that the earth then was destroyed and that we're on the second earth. But I forget where this is written in the scriptures. Brother, help me out here. That the, uh, the first earth is passed away. We're still on the first earth. Okay, and there's another earth coming. But that's not until much later. Okay? Uh, nonsense. The gap theory thing is just absolutely stupid. But see, when man rejects God, and man, as their father, the devil, wants to believe they are their own God and judge for themselves, apart from God's perfect righteous judgment, what is evil and what is good, God gives them over. Wherefore God, gave, wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Ye are your own gods. You are worshipping yourselves. Satan is a created being. Hence, an atheistic Satanist. Hey, Dave Murphy, you're an idiot. You are stupid. You are abs You're not willfully ignorant. You're just stupid. Okay? You are stupid, okay? Atheistic Satanist, give me a break. You are of your father, the devil. You are your own God, okay? Every single atheist out there, you are your own God. So don't say, every brethren, every time you meet an atheist, throw it right in their face. Go right ahead. They believe in a God themselves. And when you believe you are your own God, what better way to refine that belief than sleazy believism? The stepping stone to Roman Catholicism. Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 1. See, dear friend, this is why when you hear me say Jesuits are in control right now. It's not that the Lord is not helpless. He's like, oh, I can't. No. Mankind has chosen Satan. Those of us who are his, we're in, he's got the whole world in his hands, right? But we who are his, we're under him, okay? We're not of the world. But the world, which greatly outnumbers us, despite what Christianity wants you to believe, okay, they have chosen Satan. They have chosen themselves over God. Hence, God 
has given them over. And in God giving them over, who is the God of this world, the little g-god of this world? Satan. Hence, a back book. Or as my wife used to say, Habakkuk. Uh, Habakkuk, chapter 1, verses 12 on to verse 17. Art thou not from everlasting, O Lord my God, my Holy One? We shall not die, O Lord. Thou hast ordained them for judgment. Go ahead and read this whole chapter on your... Pause the video. Pause this video right now. Read Habakkuk chapter 1 in its entirety. Pause the video, then get back to this. You'll know what this is talking about, okay? Thou hast ordained them for judgment. Oh, look at verse uh, 6. For lo, I rise up to Chaldeans, Babylon. And Catholicism is the Babylonian Egyptian religion perfected. Art thou not from everlasting, O Lord, my God, mine Holy One? We shall not die, O Lord. Thou hast ordained them for judgment. And, O mighty God, thou hast established them for correction. See, the powers that be are ordained of God. But here in America, and on this whale, which belongs to the Lord, he has allowed Satan, through the Jesuit order, who is controlling the world, for judgment and correction against this world. Okay? That's what that's talking about. And when you hear me say that Rome rules the world, dear friend, I'm not at all saying contrary that the Lord doesn't own or run the world. Nothing happens without him. No. See, this ought to have been obvious unto anyone. But, like I said, I'm not going at you. I'm glad you brought this up because now we have this video. I'm glad you did. Thank you. Seriously. And like I said, you get offended? Hey! Take offense in the gate, buddy! And don't let it hit you in the rear end! If you get offended. If you don't, hey, fine. Great. Great. Okay? But... The Lord is in control. Yes, he is. But see, Satan, through the Jesuit order, is being allowed to wreak havoc right now onto a world that has rejected him. Okay? You understand? Okay, you atheists? Okay? There's no God. Look what's happening. Uh, you read Romans 2, the wicked is just digging their pit deeper and deeper, you know, giving them more rope to hang themselves on, okay? Okay? It's not that God is powerless. God has given this world over unto the devil. And once we, he who now letteth will let, until he be, the body of Christ, be taken out of the way at the redemption of the purchased possession, the body of Christ isn't going to be here. God is omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent, unlike what that idiot old fart says. Okay? All right? God's not going anywhere. His body, the body of Christ, is going somewhere. Once we gone, dude, ain't going to be nothing to hinder Satan. It's going to return to the dark ages. Okay? So when you hear me say, when you see the videos, when Rome rules the world, and you hear me say that the Jesuits are in control right now. Well, no, Jesus. Yeah, Jesus is in control. But unto a world that rejects him, he has handed this world over to Satan. Out of his own power, he has done that. You see? See how this works, dear friend? Let's continue now and have back, book. Okay? Thou art of purer eyes than to behold evil, and cannot, look, cannot, and cannot not look on iniquity. Wherefore lookest thou upon them that deal treacherously, and holdest thy tongue when the wicked devoureth the man that is more righteous than he? And the Lord isn't slack, as some men count slackness, 
but will have all men to repent. Okay? Okay? Do you understand, friend? Do you understand? Okay? Let, let's find that one second. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, mankind, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Okay? Verse 14 in Habakkuk. And make us men as the fishes of the sea, and the creeping things that have no ruler over them. They take up all of them with the angle. They cast them into their, they cast them in their net and gather them in their drag. Therefore, they rejoice and are glad. Look at all these Christians that are snagging these people with the lies of Satan. Okay. Therefore, they sacrifice unto their net. And burn incense onto their drag. They make the argument of something else rather than the deeper issue. Because by their by them their portion is fat and their meat plenteous, shall they therefore empty their net and not spare continuously to slay the nations? Isaiah chapter 19, which we have already covered in the video. Isaiah chapter 19. Isaiah chapter 19, verses 1 on verse 5. The burden of Egypt, the world, for our instruction in righteousness. Behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud, and shall come into Egypt. And the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence, and the heart of, the, of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. And I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians. They shall fight every one against his brother, and every one against his neighbor. City against city, and kingdom against kingdom. And the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof. And I will destroy the counsel thereof. And they shall seek to the idols, and to the charmers, and to them that have familiar spirits, and to the wizards. And the Egyptians will I give over into the hand of a cruel lord. The giving over thing again. And a fierce king shall rule over them, saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts. And the waters shall fail from the sea. And the river shall be wasted and dried up. Zechariah chapter 11. Not Tobit. <laughs> Zechariah chapter 11, verses 15 on to verse 17. And the Lord said unto me, Take unto thee yet the instruments of a foolish shepherd. Okay? For lo, I will raise up a shepherd in the land. I will raise up. Give them over to a cruel Lord. Huh? Do you get it? Okay? For lo, I will raise up a shepherd in the land, which shall not visit those that be cut off, Neither shall seek the young one, nor heal that that is broken, nor feed that that standeth still. But he shall eat the flesh of fat, and tear their claws in pieces. Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock. The sword shall be upon his arm, the arm of flesh, and upon his right eye. His arm shall be clean dried up, and his right eye shall be utterly Who is this cruel Lord? Who is this foolish shepherd? Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Come on, fingers, work with me. Verses 3. Go on to verse 7. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, The man shall not live by bread alone, 
but by every word of God. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain shewed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. How does he do that today? Your health phone. TikTok. YouTube. You know? The ads that they put on videos show you all these exotic places. Right here. He can do that today to even you. Okay? And the devil taking him up into a high mountain shoot unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Oh, about five seconds before you can skip the stupid ad. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. For, don't look at me. For that is delivered unto me. And whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. Satan, who is going to be cast into the lake of fire. Satan is not in hell as we speak. Satan has yet to be in hell. Okay? Satan is going to be cast into the lake of fire with all you atheists, with all you charismatics, with all you Catholics, with you Calvinists, and you sleaze, sleazy believism heretics, okay? You're all going to go to the lake of fire with your God, your father, the devil. Okay? All right? Satan is not in hell. But for that is delivered unto me. This world in it as a whole has rejected God. Hence, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 4. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God, deceitfully, like so many of these Christians do. But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the little g God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. I believe in Jesus. Yeah, which one? And see, the fake grace, the fake grace, sleazy believism devils throw that at me. Well, you don't believe in the true three-person God. <laughs> You're right. <coughs> okay. I, if I could, I would wipe dumb all over you're a little trinity. Yeah, your trinity is dumb. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe in the God of the scripture. One God who is comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Yeah. Because I do believe in Jesus. The actual Jesus. Who said, uh, what did he say? If you don't believe that I am he, the Father, you shall die in your sins. And what does a Trinitarian do? Trained by Catholicism over the centuries. Jesus is not the Father. <laughs> okay, let me run along. You go ahead and bow to the Vatican, okay? So, the little G God of this world Satan, given unto him for judgment and correction. Doesn't mean that Satan and God are in cahoots working together. No. This world has rejected the Lord. He is the father, Satan is the father of many people. Hence, that's why Satan is able to get away with 
through his army, the Jesuit order, through his church, the Vatican, Mystery of Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Hence, Satan is allowed to rule the world. And once we are taken out of here, nothing's going to be hindering Satan. Okay? That's what that means. I have never once, ever once, thought contrary that the Lord, that the earth it does not belong unto the Lord. Okay? But that's going to be it for this video. Okay? Satan through Rome, through the Jesuit order, is in control of this world right now. The Lord is in control himself. Yes, he is. Nothing happens without the Lord say so. Absolutely. Satan can't harm one of us unless the Lord give him permission. But then again, the Lord doesn't get in the way of children that aren't his. Okay? you got to understand that. Hence, Satan is being allowed to do what he is doing to the world. Hence, the Jesuits, Rome, controls the world as judgment from the Lord against it. Comprende? An hour and 41 minutes. You understand? That's going to be it for this video. Um, got quite a few things got to do today. Thank you, my brethren, sisters, dear saints, church of God. Thank you for everything. Thank you for your prayers. We love you. Um, pray for one another. There are a lot of lonely brethren out there. We need your prayers. It's going to be it for this video. I'm going to get this uploaded. Thank you for watching this if you do, and we will see you in the next video.